a very good evening aspirants i welcome you all to the hindu daily news analysis brought to you by shankar is academy today i am going to cover important news articles from the hindu newspaper dated 5th of february 2023 and displayed here are the list of news articles that we will be discussing today you can go through it and those who haven't yet subscribed our youtube channel do subscribe and hit the bell icon button to get regular notifications regarding our current of videos now let us get into our first news article discussion now have a look at this faq article this faq article is about mangroves and its importance mangroves have been in the news for the past couple of days because in our 2023 24 budget our government launched a new scheme called mishti mishti means mangrove initiative for shoreline habitats and tangible incomes it is due to this reason mangroves have been in the news the faq article here talks about characteristics of mangroves types of mangroves its distribution in india its importance and about the recently launched mishti program so in this discussion let us see all these aspects in detail before that the syllabus regarding this discussion is displayed here you can go through it now let's start the discussion with some basics about mangroves mangroves are salt tolerant plant communities they mainly occur in tropical and subtropical regions of the world that is between latitude 24 degree north and 38 degree south within the tropical and subtropical region they mainly occur in intertidal zones here the intertidal zone is the area where the ocean meets the land between high and low tides these intertidal zones are marsh in condition the conditions in the intertidal zones include lack of oxygen high salinity and diurnal tidal inundation these conditions are not ideal for normal plants to grow but the mangroves thrive in these conditions how this is because the mangroves exhibit various morphological and physiological evolutionary adaptations to survive in these harsh conditions now let us see the adaptations that the mangroves have and how the adaptations help the mangroves survive the first one is the salt glands in the leaves now look at this image here this is how these salt glands help excrete excess salt from the plant the second adaptation is the specialized lenticel glands now look at this image here this image shows the lenticel gland of the mangroves the lenticel glands are located in the bark of the tree and help in exchange of gases the lenticel gland in the mangroves is specialized to allow for only gas exchange and it prevents the entry of salt then the third major adaptation is the stilt roots and butter roots now look at this image here this is the stilt root system of mangroves and this is the butter root system see the soil in the swamps is very loose so these adaptations provide physical stability to the mangroves then the fourth adaptation is pneumatophores now look at this image here these are called pneumatophores or breathing roots all tissue of plants require oxygen including the underground roots in places that are water logged the soil has less oxygen since the mangrove grows in water logged areas they have an adaptation which is the breathing roots or pneumatophores the pneumatophores extend upward from the underground roots above the soil surface so during low tides air is taken up through opening passages in the pneumatophores and transported to living root tissues so this is about breathing roots and the last adaptation is viviparity viviparity is reproductive adaptation in a viviparity type of reproduction in which the seeds while remaining attached to the parent tree start germinating into propagule now look at this image here you can notice that the seeds have started germinating while attached to the plant after some time they are dropped in the water below once in the water the half germinated seed either takes root in the sediments near the parent tree or in some cases it is dispersed with the tides and currents to the other shorelines so these are all the major adaptations of the mangroves that help them to survive in harsh intertidal zones now let us see the types of mangroves the mangroves are classified into true mangroves and mangrove associates the true mangroves have the following characteristics firstly they are woody secondly they occur only in mangrove ecosystems and finally they have morphological adaptations like stilt roots buttress roots pneumatophores viviparity and salt exclusion glands only if a plant possesses all these characteristics it is called true mangrove the common examples include avicennia officinalis and rhizophora mucronata 
unlike the true mangroves the mangrove associates did not show higher salt tolerance although the true mangroves can grow in salty conditions the mangrove associates grow best under fresh water some common examples include alangium salvifolium and thespecia populonia according to the botanists the number of true mangrove species in india at about 42 and mangrove associates at 68 For a stable, resilient mangrove ecosystem, the mangroves must coexist with each other. Okay. Now, having seen the types of mangroves, now let us see the distribution of mangroves in India. India has about 4,992 square kilometer of mangroves, according to the Indian State of Forest Report 2021. Mangroves in India are distributed across nine states and three union territories. Among the states, West Bengal has the highest mangrove cover in India. The table below which is taken from the Indian State of Forest report shows the distribution of mangroves in India. As you can see from this table compared to the 2019 survey there has been increase of 17 square kilometer of mangrove cover in India. This is positive news but still the mangroves are facing various threats. Now we will see the threats one by one. The first threat is the reclamation of mangrove land for agriculture. The second threat is presence of aquaculture or fisheries in the coastal areas that obstruct the tidal flow and the flow of sediments thirdly mangroves are also cut down for timber fodder and fuel wood the last major threat is the increase in industrial activities and the discharge of untreated waste in mangrove areas these are the major threats faced by the mangrove ecosystem to address these threats and to increase the mangrove cover our government has taken many steps the recent one is the mishti program Before looking at the Mishti program let us look at the importance of mangroves that prompted the government to take steps for its conservation Firstly the mangroves play a major role in combating climate change According to the state of World Mangroves 2022 report the mangroves hold up to four times the amount of carbon as some other ecosystems of similar size For example if one hectare of a terrestrial forest can hold up to 10 tons of carbon then a mangrove of the same size will hold up to 40 tons of carbon so the mangroves are one of the world's most efficient carbon sinks as india plans to become carbon neutral by 2070 the mangroves will play a major part in it secondly the mangrove helps cushion the blow of cyclones as the mangroves are very dense they reduce the speed of cyclones and help reduce the impact of cyclones in coastal areas Thirdly the mangrove also play an important role in controlling coastal erosion. The mangrove with their tight network of roots prevent the coast from storm surges, currents, waves and tides. And finally mangrove also helps in conserving biodiversity. The mangrove provide habitat for a large number of birds, fishes, invertebrates, mammals and plants. See these are all some of the important advantages associated with mangroves. Now let us look at the mystery program. See under the mystery program mangrove plantations will be taken up in coastal areas and in salt pans. The plantation drive will be carried out through a convergence between MG Narega scheme and Campa fund. Once implemented this scheme will help increase the mangrove forest cover in India. But the issue with the mystery program is that it is just a mangrove tree plantation drive. The survival rate of mangrove seed plantation is 50% and the survival of mangrove saplings is about 60%. It takes 3 years for a new mangrove plant to stabilize. So a contract based one time plantation under MG Narega and Campa may not work as the seeds and the saplings might get destroyed due to lack of attention. So the efforts under ST program will not turn fruitful until the government educates the local community about the importance of mangroves. So people must be educated about the importance of mangroves. This will encourage the local community to take ownership of the local mangrove forests and this will also help to increase the mangrove cover in the long run. Then that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about mangroves, then we saw about the adaptations that the mangroves have, then we saw about the types of mangroves, then we moved on to see about the distribution of mangroves in India, then we saw the threats faced by the mangroves and then we saw about the importance of mangroves. and finally we saw some facts regarding mishti program of indian government see this topic is very much important for your both preliminary and mains examination see upsc may put a question regarding the importance of mangroves and the threats faced by the mangroves and so on so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion
Now take a look at this news article. Talks about the issue of censorship of BBC documentary relating to Gujarat riots. See, the Indian government banned the publishing of the BBC documentary using the emergency powers granted to it under the IT rules 2021. The ban has been questioned by a wide set of population in India. In this context only, more than 500 scientists and academicians across India have showed their dismay towards the government regarding the ban of BBC documentary. They contended that the ban has violated the rights of Indians to assess and discuss important information about their society and government. This is the crux of the news article given here. Now in this discussion, we will understand about censorship, then about the need of censorship, then about the laws governing censorship in India. And finally, we will also learn about the positives and negatives of censorship. Now firstly, let's see the meaning of the word censorship. See, censorship can be defined as an activity which is used to prohibit the circulation of a content which is considered harmful for a society. Here the content which is to be censored can be an advertisement, film, series, music, speeches, reports, debates, magazines, newspapers, plays or any form of art, literature, documentary or oral works. This is a brief about censorship. Now let's see about the need for censorship. Firstly, censorship plays a key role in national security. By censoring certain types of material, government can ensure that sensitive information does not fall into the wrong hands. For example, the details about airports, atomic power stations and so on needed to be safeguarded. So any information about them in the public domain needs to be censored to ensure national security. Secondly, censorship is necessary to promote social harmony. Censorship can be used to prevent the spread of dangerous ideas that might cause chaos, unrest and discord among the public. Hate speech with an intention to create communal hatred falls into this category. Thirdly, censorship is needed to protect children from viewing inappropriate content. Finally and most importantly, censorship can be used to contain the spread of misinformation. In the era of defects, it is becoming difficult to segregate real information from the false ones. If the spread of false news is allowed, it will lead to multidimensional problems. So, censorship plays a key role here by blocking the spread of misinformation among the public. So, these points provides us the reason for the need of censorship. Now, moving on to see about the various laws and agencies which are imparted with the functions of censoring content in India. Firstly, let's take the case of print media, which includes newspapers, magazines, etc. Newspapers in India are regulated by the Press Council of India. Secondly, let's take movies. See, the movies which are releasing in India are censored by a statutory body called a Central Board of Film Certification. Now thirdly, coming to the social media intermediaries like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and so on, false contents which are posted in these platforms should be taken down. The government of India issues a censorship order to the platforms. Government of India gains the power to censor false contents present in online platforms through the IT rules 2021. Here note that the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting directed YouTube and Twitter to take down links sharing the BBC documentary under Rule 16 3 of the IT rules and Section 69A of the IT Act 2000 that allow for emergency blocking. So, these are all some of the agencies and laws which are imported with the function of censoring content in India. Now, talking about the advantages and disadvantages of censorship, see the advantage part was already discussed in this discussion. We saw about the need of the censorship right. That points provide for the advantages of censorship too. So, in short, censoring certain content is necessary to maintain social order and to promote national security. With this, now we will understand the disadvantages of censorship one by one. Firstly, censoring goes against the provisions of Article 19 of the Indian Constitution. As you all know, Article 19 deals with free speech and expression. Censoring too much may result in dilution of the right to free speech and expression of an individual. Secondly, censoring may cause chilling effect on the population. When censoring is coupled with criminal prosecution, people may fear to create or share content which are against the government. See, the term chilling effect refers to a phenomenon where individuals refrain from engaging in free expression for fear of running against a law or regulation. Chilling effect generally occurs when a censorship law is too vague. As a result, individuals they themselves will try to curtail their speech and expression to escape punitive governmental action. 
This concept is only known as chilling effect. So too much of arbitrary censorship may result in chilling effect on the population. Thirdly, only by meaningful discussions and deliberations, society will move forward towards the next level. If too much censorship is made part of the law of the land, then it will curtail the discussions which are against the order of the day. This is all about the issues associated with censorship. And that's all regarding this discussion. This discussion we saw about the term censorship, then we saw about the need for censorship, then we saw about censorship laws in India, and finally we saw some disadvantages associated with arbitrary censorship. See, this topic is very much important for your mains exam. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now with these key points in mind, let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this snippet here. It says that Chile has declared a state of disaster in several central and southern regions. This is because of forest fires caused by a devastating heat waves. Forest fire is not just an event in some part of the world. Even in India, there has been a tenfold increase in forest fires in the past two decades. And reports say that more than 62% of Indian states are prone to high intensity forest fires. Now in this context, let us learn about forest fires in detail. First of all, what are forest fires? See, forest fires are any uncontrolled burning of plants in a natural setting such as a forest, grassland, brushland or tundra. The forest fires spreads by consuming the natural fuels in the forest. Forest fires can be incited by human actions such as land clearing, extreme drought, heat waves, etc. In rare cases, forest fires are also caused by lightning. Now how do forest fires occur? Basically, there are three conditions that need to be present in order for a forest fire to burn. They are fuel, oxygen and finally a heat source. Here fuel is any flammable material like trees, grasses etc. Then we take oxygen, it is supplied by the air and as we all know oxygen is needed to burn. Finally the heat sources. It only helps to spark the wildfire. As I told before, natural factors like lightning, hot winds and even heat waves can provide sufficient heat to spark a forest fire. Then campfires, cigarettes, land clearance for agriculture like the stubble burning are some anthropogenic causes. Also, frequency of forest fires is growing due to climate change. Hotter and drier conditions are drying out ecosystems and it increasing the risk of forest fires. This is all about the causes. Is every forest fire dangerous? To understand that, you should know about the types of forest fires. Actually, there are three basic types of wildfires. First is the crown fire. It burns trees up their entire length to the top. They are the most intense and dangerous wildland fires. Secondly, there are surface fires. They burn only surface litter. These are the easiest fires to suppress and it causes the least damage to the forest. And finally, ground fires. It is also sometimes called as underground or subsurface fires. They occur in deep accumulations of humus, peat and dead vegetation that become dry enough to burn. These fires move very slowly but it can become difficult to suppress ground fires. This is all about types and we can witness that all forest fire is not dangerous. Now what are the consequences of forest fires? Forest fires can disrupt transportation, communications, power and gas services and water supply. They also lead to loss of property, crops, resources, animals and people. Then forest fires impact weather and the climate by releasing large quantities of carbon monoxide and fine particulate matter into the atmosphere. This results in air pollution which can cause a range of health issues like respiratory and cardiovascular problems. On the face of it, it looks very bad, right? But there are some good consequences as well. Forest fire removes low growing bushes, it cleans the forest floor of debris and opens it up to sunlight. Besides this, forest fires nourishes the soil also. It reduces the competition for nutrients and allows established trees to grow stronger and healthier. So you should know about this aspect of forest fire also. Now finally, let's see about the measures of Indian government to reduce forest fires. The first is the National Action Plan for forest fires. See this plan was started in 2018 with the goal of reducing forest fires. It aims at informing, enabling and empowering forest fringe communities and it also incentivizes them for collaborating with state forest departments in controlling forest fires. Then there is the forest fire prevention and management scheme 
know that it is the only government sponsored program dedicated to assist states in dealing with forest fires and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about what are forest fires then we saw how forest fires occur and we also saw some causes of forest fires then we saw the types of forest fires and finally we saw some consequences and benefits of forest fires see this topic is very much important for your mains exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this news article here it says that the supreme court appointed committee has recommended to protect the endangered great indian bustard which live close to the proposed power lines in the thar and kutch deserts of rajasthan and gujarat the committee said that the line should be rerouted or made to go underground however the private and public power companies contended that shifting all overhead lines to underground would be expensive and would significantly increase the cost of solar power so this is the issue now in this context let us learn about the great indian bustard in prelims perspective see the great indian bustard is one of the heaviest flying birds and these birds are endemic to the indian subcontinent the adult males are around 122 cm tall and of 11 to 15 kg of weight the adult females reach up to 92 cm height and weigh about 4 to 7 kg this species is known for very slow reproductive rate it lays only one egg for one or two years and the success rate of these eggs under ideal situation is around 60% to 70% because of such slow reproductive rate and specific habitat requirements the species is found to be highly vulnerable this is a brief about great indian bustard now how do they mate see during the mating period the males display themselves to attract females the males have a gular pouch when they wish to attract females they inflate the gular pouch like you see in this image the pouch helps them to produce a resonant booming mating call to attract females the sound of the mating call can be heard up to a distance of 500 meters now talking about their habitat the great indian bustard usually inhabits open habitats like short grasslands open scrub and rain fed agriculture they breed in traditionally selected grasslands more than 90% of the total birds in the world are in india very few birds are also seen in pakistan in india the largest number is found in the thar desert of rajasthan few birds are also found in gujarat maharashtra andhra pradesh and karnataka this is about their habitat now we will see about the threats faced by the great indian bustard the threat is that these birds are prone to collision with power lines as mentioned in this article This is because of their poor frontal vision and their inability to see power lines from a distance. Further, because of their larger size, it becomes difficult for them to shift trajectory quickly after seeing power lines. Many a time there is a huge impact with these lines and even if there is no electrocution, these birds die because of the impact of collision. Sometimes they also die because of electrocution. The problem is that the habitats of great indian bustard have a high density of transmission lines. This is because of the potential for renewable energy production in Rajasthan and Gujarat. Recently a unique initiative was brought in. This initiative is aiming to install firefly bird diverter for overhead power lines. Now look at this image. Firefly bird diverters are attached with or installed on power lines. These diverters are called fireflies because they look like fireflies from a distance. They shine on the power lines in the night. They work as reflectors for bird species like the great indian bustard but the supreme court appointed committee argues that bird diverters are a stop gap measure that is temporary solution and they cannot entirely guarantee an end to bird hits this is all about the threats faced by great indian bustard now finally talking about their conservation status the great indian bustards are categorized as critically endangered under the international union for conservation of nature's that is iucn's red list of threatened species they are also listed in appendix 1 of sites that is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora apart from this the great indian bustards has also been identified as one of the species for the recovery program under the integrated development of wildlife habitats of the ministry of environment forests and climate change and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the great indian bustard its habitat then we saw about the threats faced by the great indian bustard and finally we saw the conservation status of great indian bustards see this topic is very important for your prelims exam 
so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this news article in the 2023-24 budget our government allocated rupees 7000 crore for the third phase of the e courts project the news article is regarding this allocation the chief justice of india dy chandrachut welcomed this move of the government and he further said that the e courts project will ensure that courts are accessible to every citizen and it will also make the judiciary more efficient this is about the news article given here now in this context let us see the basics about e courts see e courts or virtual courts is a concept that aims to limit the physical presence in court in case of e court the adjudication process takes place over the internet in our country we undertook the e courts project to transform the indian judiciary by ict enablement of courts the indian e courts project was conceptualized on the basis of national policy and action plan for implementation of information and communication technology in the indian judiciary 2005 report this report was submitted to the committee of the supreme court see the e courts mission mode project is a pan india project monitored and funded by the department of justice which is functioning under ministry of law and justice government of india now with these basics about e court project now let us see the advantages associated with e court project first let us see the advantages the e courts project will bring to the citizens here the first one is improved accessibility the accessibility is increased due to better scheduling mechanisms and online digital filings in addition to this digital orders in multiple regional languages will significantly improve understanding of the process which in turn will increase the access to justice next it will bring down the cost of justice e filings and virtual hearings will reduce travel costs thereby reducing the cost of assessing justice the next advantage is the e courts will increase transparency e court initiatives like live streaming of cases and open data will make the judicial process transparent the e court will also help in research accessible open data due to e courts will enable researchers academics and civil society to better understand the functioning of the judicial system finally e courts are environment friendly because minimizing paper based processes will bring a significant reduction to the environmental costs of the judicial and legal system this is about the advantages the e courts that will bring to the citizens now moving forward let us see the advantages the e courts project will bring to the lawyers the e courts will help draft better legal strategies see greater access to information through e courts will support crafting better legal arguments and strategies for the lawyers secondly since the court records are updated digitally in real time the need for inspection or regular updation of case files by the lawyer is brought down also this will avoid issues arising from loss of case records or the need to reconstruct case files this is about the advantages to the lawyers now let us see the advantages the e courts project will bring to the judges the first advantage here is better tracking of cases a unified digital platform will enable courts to track the progress of cases from the court of original jurisdiction through appellate courts secondly with digital courts there will be greater access to information this will help the judges make well informed decisions very easily finally e court will help in efficient delivery of justice see seamless integration of the judicial system with the tough police prisons prosecutions etc which will improve the speed of information sharing and make the judicial process more efficient see these are the major advantages of e courts but it also has some issues associated with it the issue include low penetration of the internet in india then low digital literacy weak digital infrastructure and vulnerability to hacking and cyber security this is all about issues and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about e courts then we saw about the advantages of e courts see this topic is very important for your both prelims and mains exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this news article this news article is taken from today's tiruvananthapuram edition of the hindu newspaper it says that the 12th annual faunal survey of the shendurne wildlife sanctuary was jointly conducted by the forest department travancore nature history society and other non governmental organizations the survey documented nearly 450 species of birds odonates butterflies archnits and mammals 
Asmenias 165 butterfly species including the Malabar raven, Malabar banded swallowtail, red disc bush brown, Shayadri grass yellow, golden tree flitter and Travancore evening brown were documented. Rare species such as small palm bob, purple spotted flitter, Ramaswamy's six line blue and Shiva sunbeam were also spotted as per the news article. You should know the names of these species from the exam point of view. That's why I told to you. So take a note of them. Now it is also important to know few facts about Shendurne Wildlife Sanctuary. See the Shendurne Wildlife Sanctuary is a protected area in the Western Ghats. It is located in Kollam district of Kerala as you see in this map. It comes under the control of Agastya Malay Biosphere Reserve. The Shendurne Wildlife Sanctuary was established in 1984 spanning an area of about 172.403 square kilometer. The sanctuary owes its name to the endemic species Gutta travancorica locally known as Chenkurunji. Shendurne Wildlife Sanctuary is rich in biodiversity and lies on either side of Shendurne River. It is also known for its artificial lake and reservoir of the Tenmala Dam. Now talking about the flora and fauna, the Shendurne Wildlife Sanctuary is a biodiversity hotspot with 1257 species of flowering plants with 309 species being unique to the Western Ghats. Then the sanctuary is also home to 267 species of birds which includes many migratory, endemic and endangered species. Also the majority of the sanctuary is covered in tropical evergreen and semi evergreen forests. And another important fact is that the sanctuary is known to have population of the highly endangered lion-tailed macaque. Then other common mammals include elephants, gar, sambar deer, wild bear, malabar jain kuril and nilgiri langur are also seen in the Shendurne wildlife sanctuary. That's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the names of butterflies that were spotted in Shendurne wildlife sanctuary. Then we saw about Shendurne wildlife sanctuary, its location and finally we saw some facts about flora and fauna found in the Shendurne wildlife sanctuary. See this topic is very much important for your prelims exam. So try to remember the butterfly names we have discussed. Now with these key points in mind let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. This news article gives us data about the enrollment of Muslim students in higher education. This data is taken from the recently released All India Survey on Higher Education Report for 2020-21. The survey shows that the states such as West Bengal, Telangana and Kerala have contradicted the national trend of the number of Muslim students enrolled for higher education. So in this discussion we will understand the data provided in this news article. Firstly, the All India Survey on Higher Education report shows that the proportion of Muslim students enrolling for higher education dropped from 5.5% in 2019-20 to 4.6% in 2020-21 in India. This is the percentage. Now talking in terms of aggregate numbers, the enrollment of Muslim students dropped from 21 lakh in 2019-20 to 19.2 lakh in 2020-21. Here we could witness a decline, right? This is overall data. Now coming to state specific data, we saw in the beginning that the states such as West Bengal, Telangana and Kerala have contradicted the national trend right. Now we will see the data with respect to these states. Now first let's take West Bengal. See in West Bengal about 2.38 lakh Muslim students enrolled for higher education in 2020-21. Whereas the number of Muslim students who joined higher education in the year 2019-20 was 2.35 lakh. The enrollment has increased right. Now talking about Telangana, in Telangana the number of Muslim students enrolled in the year 2020-21 was 1.28 lakh as against the 1.21 lakh in 2019-20. Here also we could witness some increase right. Now finally coming to Kerala, Kerala marked an increase in the enrollment of Muslim students from 1.66 lakh in 2019-20 to 1.7 lakh in 2020-21. Here also we could see a slight increase in the enrollments. Now moving on to see about the states in which the enrollments have declined. Among the states that recorded the sharpest decline in the number of Muslim students enrolled was Uttar Pradesh. In Uttar Pradesh, the enrollments were dropped from 3.57 lakh in 2019-20 to 2.99 lakh in 2020-21. It is a huge decline, right? Apart from UP, in Jammu and Kashmir also, the enrollment dropped sharply. In Jammu and Kashmir, the enrollments dropped from 1.78 lakh in 2019-20 to 1.31 lakh in 2020-21. 
so the worrying fact is that the decline in enrollment of muslim students comes when there has been a 7.5 percentage increase in overall enrollments across the country in 2020-21 from the 2019-20 figure so to say simply the overall enrollments in the higher education across the country has increased to about 7.5 percentage but we can witness the decline in enrollment of muslim students in the country this is all about the data see some political analysts are saying that these figures might be looked at from an economic perspective because they are among the communities which are economically lagging behind when compared with other communities the analysts further says that due to the increasing trend of privatization in higher education the students from the muslim community are getting fewer opportunities the analysts also pointed out that in the states where the enrollment has improved there may be more straight run higher educational institutions and less private institutes and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw some data relating to the enrollment of muslim students in higher education across the country see you can use these points while writing your main answer this will enrich your answer definitely now with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions now look at this first question this question is regarding great indian bustard now let's take up the first statement it is the state board of gujarat see this statement is wrong because great indian bustard is the state board of rajasthan so statement one is correct now coming to the second statement they are carnivores preferring to feed on insects and beetles see great indian bustards are actually omnivores they preferring to eat insects beetles and they will also eat grass seeds and berries so statement 2 is also incorrect now coming to the third statement they migrate to middle east countries during their breeding season this statement is also incorrect because great indian bustard do not migrate at all so statement 3 is incorrect now the question is asking for correct statements here three statements are incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option d none of the above moving on let's take up the second question this question is regarding forest fires here five statements are given we have to find what are all the consequences of forest fires look at this first statement reduces insect infestation actually this statement is correct forest fire kills pests and keep the forest healthy so statement one is correct now coming to the second statement release seeds for regeneration see some trees have fire resistant bark and cones that require heat to open and release seeds for regeneration the plants include manzanita chamais and scrub oak require intense heat for seed germination these plants actually encourage forest fire by having leaves that are covered with flammable resins so without fire these trees and plants will have no new generations to carry on their legacy so statement 2 is also correct now coming to the third statement co emissions that is carbon monoxide emissions this we saw in the discussion itself forest fires will release carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide so statement 3 is correct coming to the fourth statement damage the habitat of animals yes this is actually true forest fires damage habitats of animals so fourth statement is also correct coming to the fifth statement global warming see forest fires happen trees would die so there would be a loss of carbon sink resource and the forest fire would also increase the percentage of co2 in atmosphere which in turn causes global warming so fifth statement is also correct here the question is asking for correct statement so the correct answer for the question is option d 1 2 3 4 and 5 and this is the quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in the community section try to answer it and don't worry the answer for the quiz question is posted in the comment section of the quiz question itself you can verify it and displayed here are the main questions for your practice go through the questions write your answers and post it in the comment section with this we came to the end of the video if you liked our analysis please like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ais academy youtube channel thank you for listening